In this video, I'll show you how to start using 3D with your photos by creating this scene in Blender. Let's take a look at what we will create. If you like what you saw, let's get into the tutorial. This is an intro for photographers wanting to use 3D to complement your photos and composites, meaning that we're not going to do anything crazy technical. Instead, we will focus on the creative process as much as possible. There is a lot to cover. We will talk about where to find and how to use free and high quality 3D models, and how to use and set up the 3D camera inside of Blender. In 3D, you can create your own models from scratch, but to model realistic looking assets can be a very long and technical process. Fortunately for us, we have Megascans. If you don't know what Megascans is, it is a huge library over 16,000 assets that were originally intended in games and movies. Some of the titles include The Mandalorian, The Jungle Book, The Lion King, and many more. You can browse the library from your computer using their application called Bridge, which we will be using in this tutorial. Go to quixel.com to download it and create your free account. They have different categories such as forests, buildings, factories. There's even a collection only of bread. Before we get to the fun part, there's one more add-on we need to set up. Open Blender and in the preferences menu, click on add-ons. Search for images as planes and enable that. Let's now start by importing our photos. For the kids, I'm using one that I took while they were playing with their toys under the sofa. As for the rabbit, well, I found that in Shutterstock. I use Photoshop to cut out and export the PNG with transparent background. We can click in Add Images and Images as Plane. In the right hand menu, look for Material Options and select Shadeless. This means that the material will not interact with the surrounding elements. Now that we have our images in the viewport, well, they appear gray and uninspiring. And the reason for that is that the shading option is set to solid without any materials. Go to the menu and in the upper corner choose material preview to fix it. We can also change the color background by clicking on the world properties and select a white material. Now this looks much better. When using photos it is always a good idea to use real life dimensions with your objects and images. It will give you more realistic results when you're matching your camera and lighting. You can memorize Blender shortcuts, but if you are a beginner, you can use the transform gizmo in the left toolbar. I recommend you start learning the shortcuts, they are a powerful way to make your workflow faster. There's a free quick guide in the description below to help you get started. Let's scale down the images until the dimensions are more realistic. Once that is done, I move the rabbit to the front to give the scene some more depth. Finally, we can start bringing our 3D models. Before we move to the next part, be sure to join the waitlist for the course Blender for Photographers. It is a step-by-step -step course going from the basics until more advanced workflow. Everything is designed for photographers, skipping most technical and complicated steps, focusing on using free resources and simplified workflows for the creative people. The link is in the description. Now go back to the tutorial. It is time for us to open the Megascans library using Bridge. Since I was planning a simple nature scene, I searched for plants, flowers and trees. Press the blue button in the corner to start downloading and creating your library. Unfortunately, at this moment, you cannot export directly from Bridge to Blender version 3. However, you can simply export it to Blender 2.93 and copy and paste it to the most recent version. It is finally time for us to start designing and editing our scene. In this case, the first thing I want to bring is the ground material. Drag and drop it and make sure it is below the pictures and trying to make contact just to make it more believable. I'm adjusting the position of the objects and I'm dragging the tree also onto the scene. 
In this case I knew I had to place it right above the heads of the kids and in between them and the rabbit. This is a good point to start creating our grass and add some vegetation. This will allow us to populate our scene with some plants, grass and other materials we like from Megascan. The easiest way to do this is by adding a particle system. To do this we need to create a collection by bringing all the elements we like from Megascan. Once they are in the viewport, scale them down to make it roughly the same size. And let's create a collection by pressing M, we can call it grass vegetation or anything you like. With your plane selected, go to the particles menu and change it from emitter to hair. Scroll down to the render tab and choose the collection we just created. The objects will appear too small at first. Play with the scale and randomness to give it more variation. Decrease the number of your particles to improve the performance of your computer. At the same time, I start playing with the rotation sliders to give more variation and emulate normal grass. Once I'm happy with the results of the grass, I start to bring a little bit more variation with more plants that we download from Megascan. Remember that you can add as many objects as you want. Just bear in mind that every object will, will decrease the performance. Once I'm happy with the main structure, I start bringing additional flowers and elements. I brought a couple of yellow flowers that I really liked. And I also modeled a couple of carrots that I'm gonna start bringing and placing them around the scene. I'm also using them as guiding elements, pointing them both at the kids and at the rabbit to make it more interesting. You can see that I'm duplicating, rotating and having fun with them. If you like the carrots and want to use them in your own project, you can go to the freebies section of our webpage and download your free blend file. Now let's talk about camera and the camera settings. At this moment, I'm going to bring a camera, pressing Shift A and selecting the regular camera. I'm trying to place it just in front of the models and I'm going to use the right viewport as the camera view. To clean it up a little bit more, I'm going to increase the parse parse part to 1 in the menu settings. Now I can start moving and rotating the camera, adjusting it as a regular one. Now that the camera is in place, now I have the opportunity to start moving and tweaking the position of the objects to make it fit in a little bit better. I start moving the flowers to the front, improving the position of the kids and in general the composition of all the main elements. Blender allows you to choose between different sensors. We can have a full frame sensor, APS-C, a cinema camera and many more. Most of the time, in real life, I use an APS-C Sony camera for all my photography. The selection of your sensor is as important as the selection of your lenses. Otherwise, you might choose one lens without considering the crop factor of the camera body. We can also choose from an unlimited amount of focal lenses and we can play around with them. In this case, I want to keep the focal lens close to the lens I use when taking the picture. I use a 30mm in an APS-C camera. You can always double check with the Lightroom metadata in case you use multiple bodies and lenses. When you're happy with the results, it's time to hit render. But before, make sure we are generating some useful passes. Ambient occlusion is very useful to increase contrast in certain areas. Cryptomat allows for better and easier selections. Gloss Direct is very useful for final touches such as increasing highlights in certain areas. Depending on your machine, it may take a couple of minutes to finish the render. After all the render is complete, I bring all my passes into Photoshop and I start by select the ambient occlusion and apply a mask only in the grass area to increase contrast. 
for the direct close pass, I apply the mask only in the areas where I want to bring the highlights and highlight some more attention. Using regular curves, I basically do some dodge and burn to guide the viewer better, decreasing light in less important areas and increasing it where I want the eyes to rest for a longer time. I jump into camera raw to decrease highlights and increase the shadows to make it more cartoony and overall effects in the whole image. There is a whole lot more to the editing inside of Photoshop, but I just wanted to focus this video on Blender workflow. If you want to see more, please let me know in the comments below. In this video, we just used a handful of facets out of thousands available in Megascan. We still have plenty of ideas for future tutorials covering many other tricks and free resources. I hope you got inspired to start mixing 3D in your workflow. If you did, make sure to subscribe to support the channel. That's all for me today and I'll see you in the next video.